TalkZone.com <laughs> TalkZone presents the Geek Speak Radio Show with your hosts, Henry and Romo. Your top spot for everything entertainment and pop culture, including TV, movies, comics, casting news, and more. Now, here are your hosts, Henry and Romo. Uh, we did it a couple of days ago. We did Star Wars Day Part 1. Episode 1. Yeah. Today we're going to call it Epi- Star Wars Day Episode 2, <laughs> The Clones Attack Geek Speak Radio Show. Nice. With apologies <laughs> to George Lucas and Lucasfilm. Um, so, like I said, it's an event that I'm really looking forward to. Everybody is. We're all going to go and, and we're going to have fun. I'm taking my kids. We've, I've been to this museum. It's called the Zeum, Z-E-U-M, here in San Francisco. It's called the, the San Francisco Children's Museum. And before you start thinking that, oh, a museum, it's stuffy, not at all. This is not those kind of museums. And on the line, we have Joy Wong Daniels from the museum to tell us about it. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Fantastic. Thanks for coming on, first of all. Excellent. No problem. So, My pleasure. So tell everybody a, a quick history of the of the museum. Okay. Well, museum is San Francisco's hands-on, interactive, multimedia arts and technology museum for kids of all ages. And uh, basically, we were founded in 1998 in the Yerba Buena Gardens as a sort of effort to revitalize the Yerba Buena community. And so we've been around for about 11 years. Uh, It's a lot of fun, actually, for kids and their families. So when people think about a kid's museum, they think, oh, well, this is something that I can just take my kids to and watch them interact with different things. But um, everyone can be part of the creative process. Yeah, I've been there myself with my kids, like I said, and it is for kids of all ages and sizes, too. Uh-huh, that's right. If In case everybody's thinking, oh, it's just, you know, uh, little rides or whatever. It's not that at all. It's actually more high-tech than just... Uh, an art museum, correct? Yeah, that's right, because all of our exhibit spaces are infused with technology. So, for example, some of the things that the kids and their families can do is star in their own music video. So we give them costumes. They can pick their favorite song and rock out as if they were creating their own MTV music video and then take that home on DVD with them so that they can share it with their friends and family. One of the most popular exhibit spaces that we have is the Animator Studio. And for kids who love watching movies, um, different TV shows, they not only get to sort of observe how that process takes place, which is, you know, creating a clay animation character using a wire armature and clay and then modeling that character and bringing it to life through stop-motion animation. So they are able to create their own video, something that, a short film that they can take home with them as well. So basically, like in today's digital age, kids are constantly consuming different types of media. Meanwhile, at Zeeam, we give them the chance to actually be creators of that content. So um, essentially, we inspire them to be like the next you know, artist or designer or producer, and um, it's a really good opportunity for people to really explore their creativity. One of the things my kids liked was the uh, the special effects slide where you slide down a green screen and you can put pretty much whatever yeah. you want as a background. Sure, yeah, yeah. So we're really big on green screens. We love um, giving kids the opportunity to really change their environment. And uh, I think it's really amazing for them to watch themselves on screen. It's just super captivating to to see themselves on TV and in different uh, environments like outer space or in a fire or underwater. So, yeah, that's that's really fun. I'm glad that your kids enjoyed that. Yeah, and me too, I got to admit. (laughs) Good. Like I said, it's not just fun for the kids. Right. And when Dizium, when Dizium was, uh, was first created, was, was was the intent more educational or, or just to have fun or a little of both? I think a combination of both. So at school, sometimes kids don't really think that's very fun, but they're required to learn certain things. At Zium, we give them an opportunity to apply the things that they've learned in the classroom. For example, we have a news production stage. And it's a chance for kids to work on their writing skills, but they're not really conscious of it because they're like, oh, I want to tell the story. So I'm going to write a script for myself, and then it's going to be shown on the teleprompter so they can create their own newscast or weather report or, you know, episode to show that they really like. Um, all behind the camera, and for them, it's a way to incorporate the writing skills that they learn in class, but in a really fun way that doesn't seem like a chore. 
when they're in there doing the uh the newscast for for example um are they who who's teaching them i'll put it that way who who's who's uh guiding them Zeeam actually has educators that wander around the different spaces to help facilitate each of these experiences so if a child um needed help and if their parents were there sometimes the parents are are eager to just um help the kids with their stories or with the different technology if they are aware of how to use it. But um, for the most part, our educators are the ones who patiently go through and walk them through the process um, and share how it actually works. We also have field trips where the teachers are actively involved in that process as well. So it's a combination of different people being engaged, uh, taking part in learning together how everything works. And everything, by the way, is linked up on GeekSpeakRadioShow.com. The website, there's a Facebook page on there also. It's all linked on GeekSpeakRadioShow.com. Go on there and take it, check it out. You, you'll like it. Tell, tell me about the Zeom Master program that, that's going on there. Sure, yeah. Zeom Masters are teen interns. They're high school-aged students that come to Zeom. And they actually, it's a paid internship, with, which is a great opportunity for them to learn uh, different professional skills, such as customer service, um, being in a professional environment, in a museum environment, working as technicians for the different exhibit spaces. Like we have one Zeom Master intern, his name is Michael. He actually just graduated and will be going to UC Riverside, but he's super tech savvy. He's been helping to operate each of the different exhibit spaces. Um, we have someone like Leanne, who's another Zeom Master, who also just graduated. So we, we have a lot of success stories that they're going to school, they, they learn a lot of key skills while they're here on the job at Zeom, and they're able to really get hands-on work experience. Yeah, and it, it is fun, like I said, it, not only for them, but it, but I've been there like myself, like I said, and it, and, and don't everybody out there, don't think that we're just talking about just some stuffy museum. It's not, it's not even a museum <laughs> at all. When you go in there... You have you can make the uh, the claymations. That's just another thing that that I really liked, and along with my kids also, they have they have that there also. Right. Correct. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely the most popular thing, um, and our most crowded space. But yeah, the Zeom Masters are are pretty amazing. They they really support the museum and help us operate. Uh, being a nonprofit, it's it's challenging because our staff is small. We accomplish a lot given our resources, but the Zeom Masters really contribute a lot to helping us get things done. If anybody wants to apply that's listening to the Zeom Master Program, how, how do they do that on the website or how would they do that? That's right. Yeah, we have all the information on our website. Uh, there's a section called Education, and you would just look for the Zeom Master Teen Internship Program. And we are accepting applications, I think, starting in the spring. Okay. And when is what are the uh, museum, when, when does it open? The operating hours? Yeah. So uh, during the school year, Zeeam is open from Wednesday to Friday from 1 to 5 p.m. and then on Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And it changes during the summer when we're a lot busier. Um, and during the summer, we're open actually from Tuesday through Sunday from 11 to 5. But right now, as school has started, we, we have um, pared down our hours because the kids are in school and we serve a lot of field trips. During the day. Besides the, uh, before we take a break, besides what we've just talked about, tell everybody real quick what they can expect to see on a visit to the Zeeum. So uh, a typical visit to Zeeum uh, allows people to see a wide range of things dealing with interactive activities and hands-on workshops. Uh, we have the music production lab where kids can star in their own music videos, the animator studio where they can make their own films using stop motion animation and clay figures, as well as V dance, which is an interactive sort of performance dance experience. And one of the other main exhibit spaces is the digital workshop in which we give kids the digital tools, interactive media tools to create digital portraits, graphic design, and things like that. So a lot of green screens, as we mentioned earlier, and using special effects. Trust me, I've been there. It is a lot of fun. Uh, and if you don't have your own kids, borrow some and go there this weekend if you can. <laughs> <laughs> right, so right. We're, talk we're talking to Joey Wong Daniels from the Zeeum. Uh, got a little history and a little background on, on the Zeeum. Now let's take a break. When we come back, we'll get into a special event that's going on there. Uh, what is it? We'll find out in just a few minutes. Geek Speak Radio Show will be right back. Government can't control everything without controlling the Geek Speak Radio Show on TalkZone.com.
And we're back on the Geek Speak Radio Show. We're talking to Joey Wong Daniels, who holds the title of Associate Director of Marketing at Zeeum, San Francisco's Children's Museum here in, ironically enough, San Francisco. Joy, welcome back. Thank you. So something is going on, uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend that I really wanted to talk about because I happen to be a big fan of it. It's the uh, Star Wars, the Clone Wars weekend events. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about that? Yeah, so certainly we're excited about it as well. Um, On Saturday, September 11th and Sunday, September 12th, we're going to be hosting basically an interact, excuse me, an intergalactic adventure for visitors of any age. So someone like you and your children or, you know, teenagers, it's it's pretty much open to anyone. Uh, And I wanted to mention that our core audience at Zim ranges for, for the kid age, anyway, is from 6 to 12, and we do have offerings for 3 to 5-year-olds as well. So I don't want I, – I know that we were discussing what things can be done at Zoom, but I wanted to know, let you guys know that it was open to a wide range of children. Um, so anyway, going back to Clone Wars Weekend, though, with the support of Lucasfilm, we're able to bring the Clone Wars to our museum so that kids and families can connect with the Cartoon Network – TV show, animated series, The Clone Wars, with our signature multimedia and technology experiences. So that that's going to be a, a pretty big event um, where we're infusing our interactive exhibit spaces with the Clone Wars themed activities and special hands-on workshops. So what this, that looks like... Mm, sorry? No, yeah, I was going to say, this is going to be next weekend, September uh, 11th and 12th, and is it going to be a preview night on the 10th, correct? Yes, that's right. So we're having a special exclusive member preview night for our ZM members. So those who actually have an annual pass to ZM um, and they purchase that beforehand, they're able to come and have a sneak peek preview of what the Clone Wars weekend is all about. So from 5 to 7 on September 10th. And it's, it's going to be the same thing that, that the general public sees or is there anything special for a preview night? Uh I think there might be a, a few little special surprises, but um, for the most part, it's going to be uh, what we're going to have on Saturday and Sunday. Okay, and Joey can't tell you, otherwise there wouldn't be surprises. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> That's right. For the general public, it's again, it's going to happen not this weekend, but the following weekend, uh, 11th and 12th of September here at the Zeeum in San Francisco. Uh, one of the I I got my ticket. We all everybody on the show here. We got our tickets already. Explain how the uh, the time tickets. What what what's that all about? So time ticketing is something that we've developed just because we're anticipating a large crowd for the weekend event. So for this reason, we're encouraging visitors to go online to our website, zm.org, to purchase those tickets in advance. And they're allotted a certain time frame, either from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. or 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., because we want to be able to provide our visitors with the best possible experience. Um, Our capacity is about 400 at Zium. So we've allocated these different time frames so that we can ensure a smooth flow of traffic throughout our organization. And one ticket ensures and gives you access to all the uh, features, right? All, all the events. That you don't have, spe- you don't need special special ticketing for like for the autograph signing, for example, or anything. No, no, not at all. So you purchase one ticket, and that will get you access to the entire museum to all the different activities that are scheduled, including the lightsaber training uh, with uh, O.B. Sean, who is our special guest. He's coming up from L.A., and he's going to be leading the Jedi Master lightsaber training. And we're also going to be featuring Clone Wars characters, Star Wars Clone Wars characters from the 501st and Rebel Legion. Uh, And that's pretty cool because the kids can go around and adults can go around, take photos with these these folks and... uh, put them on their Facebook page. So, um, And then on top of that, we have a lot of different things like uh, arts and crafts activities, finger puppets, making little Yoda puppets. Uh, there's face painting, R- R2-D2 crafts, as well as a costume parade. So we want to encourage everyone to dress up in their best Jedi costumes or Clone Wars themed costumes and feel free to, to roam around the space and enter the costume parade. Yeah, and you kind of answered a question I was going to ask you, but I'll ask it anyway. So photos or and video are allowed, correct? Yes, that's right. And for those that are local, oh, actually, I was going to ask you also, Obi Sean, is that the one that does it at, at Disneyland? Because I think I know who you're talking about. Uh, you know, I actually am not sure. He's definitely, like, 
been trained, uh, and he has been approved by Lucasfilm as being a trained Jedi Master, so I know that he's been all around the country uh, serving different uh, events and special activities across organizations and cultural institutions, and he's very enthusiastic about really uh, sharing his skills and um, inspiring young folks. Yeah, if it is the one I'm thinking about, he's really good at what he does, and and kids are going to have fun with him. I've seen him perform before. Yeah, he's super passionate, and he has this Honda Del Sol that he's transformed into an X-Wing with uh, R2-D2 on the back end. It's in the trunk (laughs) area. It's really funny. Like, he is hardcore Star Wars. Yeah, I thought I was, but that's got me beat. (laughs) That's right. What did your car look like now? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and everybody that's local and has their ticket, give us some, some directions, uh, parking or, or public tra- transportation options. Okay, so in terms of parking, we have two different garages that are very close by. There's one on 5th and Mission as well as 3rd and Folsom. So that's the best uh, bet for people who are planning to drive to ZM. Then there's also BART, which is highly recommended. We are very close to the Powell Street um, BART. So that's very convenient. And there are several different mini buses that will take our visitors directly to ZM. Uh, We have a section on our website under visitor section. Uh, So if you go to zeum.org, Z-E-U-M.org, you can find out how to best get to our location. Yeah, like I said earlier, geekspeakradioshow.com, that's all on there also. You can just take a shortcut there and they'll get you there. I was looking at that section, as a matter of fact, and I, don't, I didn't see it in there, but are are people allowed to come in costume if they want to? Absolutely. We encourage people to come in costume. I think that really adds to the flavor of the event, and it creates excitement, and it's, it's just really fun. I mean, we have costumes here. Uh, that we use regularly, um, just general costumes. And then we'll also have some uh, Star Wars costumes. But really, we strongly, strongly encourage people to bring their own, to, to share their their um, uniqueness uh, and participate in the costume parade. And the costume parade will take place both on Saturday and Sunday at 12 and 3 p.m. And we'll be giving out prizes for that as well. One of our guys here, Romo, he wanted to know if you're going to dress up for the event. I I am thinking about it. I'd like to. I think that I have to wear something distinctively museum so that people recognize that I work here, though. So maybe I'll get some face painting done. We had, we talked about the uh, public transportation. Is food allowed to be brought in, or is there food there at at the event? So food is actually not allowed inside of the museum, but we do have different uh, venues in which we can uh, encourage our visitors to visit when they or or eat at, I guess. We have the Zeeam Cafe, which is right outside of Zeeam. And then next door is Moe's Grill, which serves hamburgers and hot dogs and different types of food. And then across the way is the Metreon. So there are different food areas for people to eat. So I think um, if people, you know, want to take a break and they, they're feeling pretty hungry, they can get their hands stamped here at Zeeam and then come back. The tickets, do they? Uh, is that for the Zeeam or just for the event? Uh, no, actually, so it's all encompassing. The ticket is for the entire Zeeam experience, and the Zeeam experience on the week over the weekend will be entirely Clone Wars. Good. So, again, that's next weekend, the, uh, the weekend of uh, September 11th and 12th, with a preview night for members only on Friday. What time does that start, Joy? The preview? Uh, 5 p.m. It goes from yeah. 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And, again, for, for Zeeam members only on Friday. But for everybody else... On the 11th and the 12th, go on out there and meet your favorite Jedi or Sith, if you so desire. And you guys um, are going to be coming dressed up in your costumes, is that right? I probably will. I, I don't know about the rest of them, but I, I probably will. <laughs> um, and I'll bring my, I, I've mentioned on the air before, my, you know, I've always been a fan, not of the Jedis, but of the dark side of the Darth Vader and, and, and company. Ah. Yeah, and so my uh, my son, he's my apprentice. His name is Darth Small, so he'll probably come as that. <laughs> Great. Yeah, so it, and the whole thing is again for for everybody, for all kids of all ages, all sizes. It is for everybody. It is a very much a, a family event. That's right. Yes, it is. So again, that's happening at the Zeeum here in San Francisco next weekend, 11th and 12th of September. Joy Wong Daniels, thank you very much for coming on the Geek Speak Radio Show and telling us about it. Thank you very much for having me. No problem. You're welcome back anytime. Very good. And we'll see you next weekend. See you soon. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. So we're all going to be there. If you guys want to go, you can if you're here in San Francisco. If not, I would book the ticket right now. 
fly over. It, it'll be worth it for that weekend. For uh, if you're, especially if you're a big, big Star Wars fan, everybody's going to be here. All the characters are going to be here. Not them, of course, because they're, they're cartoons, but people dressed up as the characters. The 501st is going to be there. Everybody who, do you guys know what the 501st yeah, is? Yeah, I do. You know, they're known as Vader's Fist. Yeah. It actually comes from the movie also. 501st. And the coolest part is George Lucas recognizes them. And, and, and as a matter of fact, uh, give a nod to them in one of the movies. Nice. So they're going to be there. You can take pictures with them. Um, and, and of course, Darth Vader is going to be there. Bounty Hunter. Everybody's going to, cause this, this last season going into this one of Clone Wars, a cartoon series, which is what this event is based on, mm-hmm. deals with bounty hunters. Yeah. Including everybody's favorite, Boba Fett. Yeah. He was introduced. As a matter of fact, I saw him at the, at WonderCon, Daniel Logan, who voices, uh, Boba Fett. He was Boba Fett. In Attack of the Clones, and he's also voicing him now in the Clone Wars cartoon, which I thought was pretty cool of them to do that. That's really cool. So, uh, let's continue with Star Wars Day, episode two. What do we call it? Um, the Clones Attack Geek Speak Radio Show, with apologies to Lucasfilm and George Lucas. <laughs> Matter of fact, how about we talk to some troopers, actual stormtroopers? Yes. Let's do it. I'm ready. Okay, so the 501st, I mentioned them. We have somebody from the 501st. We'll talk to him in just a few minutes. Geek Speak Radio Show will be right back. 